Welcome to the podcast. All right. Pilates for PTs, from business to clinical. Hi, y'all. My name is Stephen Dunn. I co-own Core Therapy and Pilates in Austin, Texas, and I'm the founder of Pilates for PTs. I've been a physical therapist for over 20 years, and I've been teaching Pilates and gyrotonic in my physical therapy practice for the last 15 years. In this podcast, I interview experts from all over the world so that you can learn more on how to grow your business or how to improve your clinical skills as a Pilates instructor in the physical therapy world. Thanks for listening. All right. So welcome to the latest interview. Uh, my name is Stephen Dunn. I'm with Core Therapy and Pilates and Dunn Studio Coaching out of Austin, Texas. And today we're bringing on to the interview uh, board our buddy Billy from New York City. Now, I've never met Billy. This is my third interview. And again, I've never met any of the people I've interviewed until we've got face-to-face today on this process. But I've known Billy for years through social media. Now, my wife and, and Billy are both uh, master trainers in the gyrotonic system, so they've met each other and been at courses together, and they know each other. But I only know of Billy through social media, which is, again, a part of this whole group, is how did your social media influence and build you a, as an authority to where people all over the country and the world know who you are, even though they've never met you? So with that said, I'm going to have Billy come on, introduce himself, tell a little bit of his story. And as he tells the story, I'll be asking some questions along the way. And so with that said, our introduction, here we go. Billy, come on in from New York City. Welcome, Billy. Hey, how are you? How's everybody? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, Billy was driving into the city, and he's got stuck in some traffic. So he pulled over on the other side, and he's got a place to park in his car, and, and we're rolling with it. So I, I love that flexibility, man. I love it. So, so Billy, Sorry about that. So introduce yourself and, and, t- and tell us a little bit about your, your journey. Okay, well, um, again, my name is Billy Macagnoni. I'm um, from New York City, born and raised in New York City. Um, my background is martial arts, uh, over 30 years martial arts training. And I was involved about almost 20 years ago with the uh, development of what's called Sal Anthony's Movement Salon with my dad. That's uh, a studio that's been still here today in, the, in New York City. And at that time, when we built that studio, the White Cloud Studio, um, where Julio was teaching at in New York City, had just closed. So uh, my father, who was friends with Julio at that time and was going to White Cloud and myself also, we decided to make the movement salon the headquarters for Daratonic in New York. And we inherited all of Julio's machines and a lot of his teachers and those kind of first generation master teachers. So I kind of like got involved with the work um, through that process there. And um, I was kind of more involved with um, wanting to stay with Daratonic and follow Julio more where my dad and Julio kind of, my father wasn't really going and getting into the work as much as I was. And because of that, I decided to open up my own studio because the movement salon was no longer being that much affiliated with the, uh, with, with Daratonic. And then I began, I think it was the year 2000. I opened up uh, Village Gyrotonic, which is in, uh, it's still there today. It's in the West Village on Bedford Street. And then I grew out of that really fast and uh, sold it to my partner and then opened up Body Evolution in 2000. And I've had Body Evolution ever since then. And at that point, I was on 2nd Avenue and 14th Street and then grew and grew and then moved in 2008 to where I am now, which is on uh, 10th Street between 1st Avenue and Avenue A, ground floor, and then grew there till about a few months ago and opened up uh, Body Evolution West 72nd. So um, that's kind of like my growth there. So right now I have those two studios, the Body Evolution East Village, Body Evolution West 72nd, and in between about three years ago, I opened up a small little place inside the Physical Therapy Center, which is called Weiss Wellness but we do call it Body Evolution Madison Avenue because it's inside of White's Wellness on Madison Avenue. So those are the three places that I'm running now are the West Side 72nd, East Village one, and then also the um, the White's Wellness one on Madison Avenue. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's a, you know, over the course of, you know, a 20 year period or an 18 year period, you've, you've you had some immediate growth and then you kind of settled in and then had some slow sustained growth, it sounds like. And then you've, 
grown a little bit more rapidly again in the last five years or so. Yeah, the last five years have been a lot of growth. Yeah, <laughs> Something yeah. Happened, yeah. Yeah, and so so, what would you say along the lines through this uh, the course of, of these you know this eighteen year process? What would you say has been the one thing that's helped you grow your business the most? Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you can say and uh, point out to. Of course, you know, you have to have a real clear vision on what you want. You have to be very passionate about what you want. Sure. And uh, for me, from the very first day that I decided I was going to open up my own studio, it was very clear that Jared Tonic was my, my way in life. And I wanted to share this to the world. And it still is exactly what I want to do. So whatever means I had to go through getting my own place and getting in, uh, I like to say an audience. Cause my whole thing is like, if you give me an audience, then I can explain and show them the work and they can experience it. Of course we know with Jared Tonic it's very hard to talk about it. You need someone to kind of see it or feel it for themselves type thing. So that was kind of clear for me right on. And then of course, you know, just having that non-quitting spirit, that is my martial art background, got a Bushido spirit where, you know, it's, it's no question about it. Failure is not an option. It's like no matter what I have to do, I have to continue on because this is my dream. These are my goals. Um, so that was kind of like basically it, knowing that, having a clear vision. And then I think what I mostly learned in the last, I guess, maybe 10 years or so was seeing how like all the dots kind of connect. And understanding that, uh, you know, again, learning about energy, which is what everything is, and especially with where we teach the tonic, to understand how energy kind of manifests. And um, one big aspect is momentum. So how do you build momentum as a business owner, as a gyrotonic teacher, and, and, and growing your business? Well, the first rule of momentum means that something has to be in motion. So it can never be uh, developed unless something's in motion. Something that's inert can never be build momentum. So the first thing you have to do is, you know, you have to get things in motion. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about, you know, your policies, your, uh, um, your whatever it is, your, your, your trainers, building a team, uh, get, setting, getting things in place and then setting them in motion and then being diligent to kind of like watch them and keep the little fire going. And before you know it, like that, then that energy kind of builds and the dots connect and it works for you. So all of a sudden, you know, the way a tornado is built, it kind of like needs the energy first to get it started. Then it builds on itself. For sure. And then you better, then you got to back off because there's so much power coming there, you know, but most people can't, well, not most people, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people, it's kind of hard, you know, to, to, to be patient or to do the correct things to build that momentum. And then they wind up failing. Or, you know, momentum works the opposite way also. So if you're doing things that are not correct, they're going to build momentum also. And then all of a sudden you have this spiraling down type thing fast that can happen. But hopefully if you have the right systems, the right kind of things set in motion, and you're diligent and you're patient, before you know it, they start those dots start to connect, and then you just start it starts building for you type thing, and that's yeah. a kind of I think the one thing I learned is to really get whatever it is that I I think I know I have to do with schedule and policies and things in order, and then just keeping it that way, and then keeping it you know in motion, then the dots start to connect, you know, and then before you know it, it's kind of um you know it's doing you kind of like what Jared Tonic does, like we don't. After you do gyrotonic enough times, I mean, do you do it? I don't think so. It does you. Yeah. It's the energy wants to arch. It wants to curl. You know, business is the same way. It's all kind of, I see everything's the same way. Relationships, everything. For Building sure. that momentum is very key, you know? Yeah. I love that. And, you know, you, you, you come from a place of, all right, nothing, nothing has momentum from being still. And, and that's just, I love that idea. And that makes total sense considering what we teach and what we love is movement and, and how movement is, is medicine and how movement is the way we, we choose to heal people. Even though I'm a physical therapist and I use my hands first to get people on, on, to start the healing process, process with what I do, it's the movement that they learn with Cheryl and her team that keeps people moving better, feeling better, and kind of really making the lifestyle change that, that no one makes in a six Six weeks out of physical therapy. So I love it. I love it. It, it ties yeah. perfectly with everything. Nice. Well, let me ask you this. 
with your process and having now three studios to, to manage, how do you handle uh, having the staff for that? Does that come from your teacher trainings or do you hire out elsewhere or, or, or does that all tie, how does that all tie together? Um, it, it's kind of like both. And um, I think you have to kind of always be developing a good team and always taking on new team members because, uh, people leave and they go away and they um, their uh, life changes and stuff. But as long as you have, I call that new blood coming in. <laughs> as long as you got that new up and coming people, then all of a sudden when someone leaves, well then someone else fills that void there, yeah. like a vacuum. Again, energy. You know, like a, a you create a vacuum, something else will take its place. But you have to have something in place, you know, to kind of like then, okay, you're gonna like be the next in line here. So I'm constantly developing trainers and a lot of that I do too with um you know especially if you're a master trainer you can do a lot of work study which saves you the desk and saves you some extra money where these trainers and kind of like can work and do side things for you for the studio to keep the, the the expenses down and then at the same time they're working off their trainings with you and then they become teachers you know yeah and work yeah. for you yeah so is that that's a scenario where they they work off their their bill for the training instead of paying for the training? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's called it's called work study, and um, it's very important. And most of my friends I know that have studios, it's a large part of the reason why they're successful is like because that. Um, yeah that that they have their trainers you know work off a thousand dollar course of free training or a two thousand dollar course of teacher training, and you know you get two or three of those, all of a sudden you have six seven thousand dollars of um income it really is income because you work for it and they will you know do the trade for it so they have to kind of like help you out but you got to be careful because you know you want them to be the right people and then if they you do run the desk or something else and it goes wrong then what are you supposed to tell them at that point you know where it's like okay you know how do you get paid after that but most of the time it works really well where you have the right people you know they will be diligent about, you know, respectful about you gave them a course. Now they're going to give you a dedicated time to, to help you out with your desk or whatever you need and um, help you, you know, economically keep the studio surviving. You know? Do they also help with actually teaching or does it all, is it so, stuff outside of teaching? Well, that's, I mean, they also, they will work off the, uh, the courses teaching for you. Gotcha. So I have like a lot of teachers that are on my schedule and they're working off the courses through teaching because some of them don't really want to be part of the desk. Yeah, fine. That, that's but as long as you know they're going to be good teachers and they're going to take private clients and they're going to do classes, well, okay, for the first whatever, six months, whatever you make there has to go back, you know, for the course. And they're fine with that, yeah. you know. And then there's other courses. So the next course or the next course, you have people maybe working off lots of teacher trainings, you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, and then that saves you a lot on payroll, but it keeps your staff getting better and better and better trained. Uh, exactly. And also gives you a nice – um connection with them because as their teacher you feel free to kind of talk to them about if you see something that's not quite the way you want that julio wants it yeah we're yeah. like i have other people not too many left anymore that might be on my schedule from other studios where i mean not that they're teaching wrong but i don't have a connection with them to okay you know i see it this way you see it that way but let's try to find out the the common ground here they're more like in Boston. I don't really have that. Most of the people that are on my schedule, they, they've done the trainings with me. There are some that haven't, but I try to over then come that scenario where, okay, we can talk and work together, you know? Yeah. And then those are people you know and you have relationships with and, and that, that helps. Exactly. So, right. I mean, and right. then there's another large part of the business, which is called rentals. So you need to be open to other, stu other uh, teachers bringing in their clients and renting out the equipment. Now, those people could be people who work for you. Those could be people, you know, that you did the training for. Or it could be people that, um, you know, just have their license and they're traveling teachers and they call you up. So you want to be open for that also, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, you have the machines. I mean, uh, you want to keep them rolling, you know. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I like it. Um, we, we've had some success where someone has gone through either our Pilates teacher training excuse me, or our uh, gyrotonic training that Cheryl's doing the, the foundation with. And when they have become an apprentice, <clears throat> they will work up front to help, you know, answering phones, doing calls, scheduling, um, so that they can be at the studio because they don't have enough apprentice hours to really make it work. So all of a sudden, 
they give us like 15 to 20 hours in the office. And then we use that time to build up their, their uh, schedule. And then after typically about four to six months, depending on the trainer, we can have them all of a sudden to where they no longer can give us 15 or 20 hours up front because now their schedule's full. And then right, right. these are, these are people that are, we're charging like, you know, say 50, 50 I think we charge $55 for an apprentice private session, whether it's Pilates or gyrotonic. And then these, these trainers are schedules really are full because the price is such a, uh, you know, it's 30, $40 less than everyone else's fees. And then all of a sudden when that trainer goes from an apprentice to a, um, full certified instructor, we let all those people that they've been seeing, we say, Hey, you can buy one more package at this apprentice rate. And then after that, the rates go up to the normal thing. And by doing it that way, we've been able to keep them pretty full as we've transitioned from apprentice to fully certified. So that's something that we've had. uh, We've had two of our uh, folks go through and help us in the front, do it that way. And now one's already, she's just getting certified and, and we're ready to, uh, move her over to teaching completely. And so now I'm trying to hire someone to fill in in the front and I'm looking at my other people that are going through the teacher training as well as people in my, uh, my inner circle that already know us that have already done business with us. So, but I, I love that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great idea that the, here, come take a course. You can continue to get better, but yet yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll allow you to either work it off or in, in whatever way we can deem possible. So and then you can utilize other pe- people's other skills. Like I would love to find a trainer that love to do like video editing and stuff like that. Cause that's, right, yeah. cause that's something that takes up a lot of my time that I really don't, don't I don't mind. Graphic doing. skills, graphics and stuff. Yeah. Totally. I, I want to find like a 25 to 30 year old young trainer who's really proficient at that to where they can yeah. help me with that 10 hours a week while they're teaching. Yeah. And, and, and so that's where I'm at a point where I'm starting to look at not just what do you do and we, yeah, I love your teaching skills, but what else do you do? Because whatever, you know, cause I'm 44 and I don't know a lot about technology and I've had to figure it all out. These young kids they are growing up on it. They, they, they know it from the time they're born. Uh, it's just in them. So that's uh, I, I love it. I love the, uh, how us just having a little conversation uh, sparks some great ideas now, something you mentioned when we were talking a moment ago before we went live was how Pilates and gyrotonic kind of piggyback each other in your studio and how they kind of one helps the other and whatnot. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, like we all have to kind of take our hats off the Pilates. I don't care how much you love gyrotonic and how deep you're into it. I mean, Pilates got us all busy and Julio would have to admit that himself. It's like, because that was the more, well, maybe the only really um, movement conditioning rehabilitative uh, modality that was around for so, so long that people were using. So then here comes Daratonic 30 years ago. It derives a lot of principles that they're using there already, but then of course he tweaks it into more of what he does. But, you know, there are, I mean, Julio was, I heard recently Julia was a Pilates teacher one time or taking Pilates. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, to have it. And, uh, I think as, as much as gyrotonic is growing, so is Pilates growing at the same time. It's not yeah. that, you know, we're getting more popular we're getting less popular. No, we're getting really, really popular, but they're still getting more and more popular. So to have it, I think is important to, um, for the people who are more white slightly know about it and are kind of mesmerized by Pilates, such a well-known name. So they come in and they do it. But if you have some gyrotonic there, they're like, oh, what's that? And what's this? And they watch. So in my studio, well, not the one, the Upper West Side one is all gyrotonic, but the one on the East Village, you know, I have like the eight performers and Cadillac. And in the back, we have 10 tower units. And you see the Pilates people constantly like looking in the back, they're looking in the back, they're like, what is going on? I'm like, all right, you know, nice and easy. Who tell you about it type thing. So um, I can't tell you how many teachers and clients I had that just crossed over, For you sure. know? For sure. So that word will actually get them in the door. And actually, if you wanted to use the word yoga, those three words are very synonymous together now. You'll hear like, you know, yoga, Pilates, Daratonic. So even in your studio, if I would, you know, you could also just use the word yoga, even if you don't have a yoga class, because yoga, what does it actually mean? It means union, right? So everything is yoga. This is yoga, what we're doing here. So, but 
if you say yoga and you have Pilates and you have gyrotonic, you're going to get a lot more, you know, those spiders that come with the, the internet type thing. When they call up about yoga, you say, okay, let me tell you about yoga. We have something called gyrotonic, gyrokinesis. Oh, really? But I was looking for yoga. But it sounds interesting. What's that? Now you got them. You know, you got the fish on the line and you reel them in. So, um, you know, if you could use that in your website or on in your um, advertisements that, you know, you those three words together, yoga, Pilates, gyrotonic, you're going to get a lot of like people that are like, okay, either coming from one or the other, but then they'll feed off of each other. Type yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And when people come into our studio, like right in the lobby is our archway. And then it's the jump stretch board. And then it's, we got four towers and then we got four reformers that are kind of tucked around over there in the corner. And again, people show up for Pilates because they know the phrase it's, you know, but shit, it took Pilates 80 years to get popular. Uh, it really did. Um, so yeah. it took a long time, but now it is very popular. And when people come in and take our Pilates classes, they've got to walk right by all of our exactly. jobs equipment. And then when they're taking those classes, they're peeking over to see you know, what's going on over there. When people are sitting in the lobby waiting for me for physical therapy, they're seeing Cheryl teaching on the archway, right? Like three feet away from them. They're seeing right, yeah. the jump stretch board being used. And so all of a sudden they see it. And so people show up to our, we've said this for years, people show up to our studio because of Pilates, but they yeah. stick around for years. And, you know, we've had time for, uh, just next month will be our 13 year anniversary, and we've had clients who've yeah. literally been with us for 13 years. Yeah. And they, yeah, do, yeah. they do a combination of things. They do a reformer class one week, uh, one day a week. They do a, a gyro tower class once a week, and then they come in and do privates with whatever they feel like their body needs. But we really we we love both systems, and we we find that that we we don't try to like separate the two like i teach a fundamental basic concepts that you can take into either system and once you get there the system will you, the clients will determine where they want to be and so we offer what they where and we know what we love but that's not always what the client loves so right um, you have to let them find it for themselves like it's a flavor thing bottom line is you know exactly exactly yeah. so well um how many uh, teacher trainings a year do you do like a couple do you do a couple of three two or three or is that something i know you teach a I lot do, of stuff but yeah i do two foundation courses a year one in the winter one in the summer but then um you know the specialized equipment at least one or two sometimes a year mm -hmm. uh because uh, I can certify on the specialized. Jared Kinesis, I do more pre-trainings, although I can teach Jared Kinesis uh, foundation course, but I have um, uh, another master trainer, Miriam Barbosa. She works with me, so I let her teach those because she's an authorized master teacher with the Jared Kinesis, so she's just, you know, so, so good. Um, but yeah, and then I do some traveling. If I get a call, I was in Korea about a year and a half ago. I went there a few times. I've been to Japan, been... Um, you know, Italy, Germany, Rome, you know, all over. So uh, whatever, which way it goes. But I know that for me, I'm a home person. I like to be homeless where the heart is. Yeah. So I'm not that traveling master teacher. That's yeah. just not me. Yeah. I'd rather build something strong here in my community or in many communities that are closely knit together, which in New York City, you know, yeah. up the west side, east side, Chelsea, Soho, uh, Madison. And it's kind of like, and then be around where I live because I just don't want to be traveling all the time around. Oh. But some people, they have a different concept. They don't want to run a studio. They'd rather be free and, and travel all the time. Um, that's just kind of not me. So, um, yeah, I do my teacher trainings, you know, inside my studios. And then I offer a lot of guest teachers to come in so that even the teacher trainings, after a while, I don't have to do them so much myself. Yeah. And then I just kind of like, uh, so you got to be very careful if you're a business owner, right? you who's running the business <laughs> so if you're teaching all the time mm, who's running the business yeah. so i knew that from day one from village Garatonic, i never became anyone's teacher you know with private yeah. i could be but the thing is like then if i'm training you every week or if i have five or six or seven or eight clients a day five days a week who's running the business yeah. you know so someone has to be free to jockey around, or I call MB, MBWA, management by walking around. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have to walk around. You have to look here. I'm going uptown studio, downtown. 
I have to be free for that, you know? And I actually like working better like that because then like I'll take a client once in a while, get them started and then give them to someone else. Yeah. That's how I started right away from Village Gyrotonic downtown. I knew that. And again, I have a little business background working in the restaurant business. because My father had a bunch of Italian restaurants growing up. So, you know, he taught me that. It was like, you know, you can't work like, if you're an owner, you can't work like a waiter, sure. you know, sure. like an owner. So if you're an owner, you can't work like of a studio, you can't work like a teacher who has this, okay, give me seven or eight clients a day, I'm fine. No, no, no. You have a lot more things you have to do, like what you're doing, social media and this and that. So starting people, getting them ready, building up clients, building their faith in you that you can, they will listen to you to say, okay, work with this person. Because I have a lot of people, please, I want to stay with you. And I'm like, look, I'm telling you, this other person is very, very good. Believe me. And they trust you. They have an affinity with you. And then they go and all of a sudden they're working with them. And then every once in a while, you do a session with them for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so like I have clients that I give to other trainers and they're there with them for years. But then every once in a while, like, okay, let's do a session together. You and I, oh, really? Okay. And they make them happy, you know? <laughs> and there's that customer service and that customer experience and that keeps people yeah. Yeah. And you that that's another one of the things with the building the momentum. Like that's something I set in motion. Now, if you set that in motion where you're taking all the clients, believe me, that's gonna you're gonna burn out. Sure. But I set in motion where I start people and give them away. Start people and give them start people and so then that keeps building up. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah. And it's and it's hard to teach, especially if you're teaching on the weekends. Like right now, Cheryl's teaching a, a you know, she's got two her, her two pre trainers doing a pre trainer update this weekend at the office. And so like for her to teach all weekend and then have clients all week and then teach on another weekend. And, you know, it's a real challenge. So I love how the system gives you multiple options. If you really, if you want to be a master trainer who just does trainings on the road, you can, if you want to just do trainings at your studio, you can, if you want to be a master trainer that sees clients and does trainings, you can. So it gives you options and that's how physical therapy is. You can take a physical therapy degree and do hundreds of things with it. So that's the beauty of the system. It's now what do we do and take with it and, and, and create our own life of what we want, our own existence yeah. of what we want. Like I live, I live a mile from my studio and people always say, Hey, can you open another studio here? Can you open another studio there? And that's where Cheryl and I are at now. It's like, we want to buy our own place because we've outgrown our current space, but there's nothing for sale in the area that we want to be in. So then it's like, do we buy something out of town that's like 20 minutes away to have a new location. And then all of a sudden all of our teachers have two spots to teach and they don't, now they don't need to teach for us and another studio. They teach for us exclusively. We can start giving them benefits, health insurance, blah, blah, blah. And then they teach for us in these two places. So that's where we're trying to decide. So with that said, that leads to my next question. When did you know that you needed more like an additional space in a different part of town and, and when did you know to pull that trigger to say, okay, I'm now going to go to this part of town and invest in this part of town and get my equipment and get going there? What, what, what led you to know that it was time for that? Well, I, I think just understanding that, uh, that I had a, a chemistry, that I had a, an equation that worked. Boom. So I'm, I'm not, you know, algebra, geometry, I'm not that good, but I know two plus two is four. <laughs> so, you know, you, you do the math and you put it on paper. It's like you have X amount of machines, you have X amount of hours to utilize those machines, and then you start seeing which is the, you see your worst scenario, whereas if, you know, the least you have to do to break even, then you see the best scenario that could happen. And all of my uh, moves were very kind of like cautious where I would know, okay, no matter what, even the first studio that I opened, Village Daratonic, I think back then the rent was 5000 a month. I think I had four machines. And, you know, I kind of did the math as far as like, you know, how would I make at least $5,000 to pay the rent? And I think I only had to do like, I think maybe we were charging 80 bucks back then. I think I only had to do like four or five sessions a day, you know, to, to make the rent. Yeah. And that was kind of like, and that was where that, that, that was also paying the tri the trainers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was like, I think I was making $50 bills. Like after you pay the trainer, you make 50, they make 40, whatever it is. Yeah. We could talk about that another time. But, um, uh, I knew that I had to do at least the minimum was like, like six sessions a day. A couple of the number was, and I knew that if I can't do six sessions a day, I need to hang my hat somewhere else. 
So I really knew that I was confident that I was able to do that. So once that kind of, uh, you understand that, then if you get one that works, then, okay, you can do that same equation with another place. And I had grown because I did Village Gyrotonic. Then I moved to Body Evolution, which was on 2nd Avenue. That was a smaller place. Then I moved to Body Evolution, which is the larger one on uh, in the East Village. Yeah. So I kept moving up, up, up like that. And then uh, I got the Madison Avenue place and then now the Upper West Side place. But it was a, a slow process of growth with um, safety. <laughs> yeah. Like knowing that there's a strong equation, that it works. And okay, I could just take that equation and put it there. Small, little by little, but um, it, it adds up, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it also yeah. sounds like you really knew your numbers. And by yeah. knowing the numbers, knowing what we could, you know, the metrics is what we reference in business. Knowing your metrics allowed you to say, okay, I can be strategic, I can be cautious, I can be safe, but really have a game plan in your mind of, when to go and, and that's exactly the kind of answer i was looking for but, but again when you go you have to have a team for sure and, and you have to have those uh that momentum has to be in charge you know those mm -hmm. things have to be set in order so yeah. uh, a big reason whenever you grow the administration has to grow it's a big, a big kind of failure in when people move and get larger with, with their businesses that they the business grew but the administration didn't grow and then they fail yeah. so when you do grow you have to grow administratively, which means more trainers, a better, you know, better desk system or yeah. more people like that are doing much more efficient. Otherwise, that same energy that was running it there will not support two, three places. For sure. So if you know you have a good team, you know you have a good administration, they're ready to kind of step to the plate and grow. Well, then, OK, let's get another 1,200 square feet or 1,500 square feet. But yeah. if you don't think that, that that has to grow with it, <laughs> you're making a big mistake it's not just you know the trainers and the machines no the admin and the systems have to grow to support that much more energy the culture yeah. grows with it everything grows you you, you know the exactly. momentum grows together it's it's it, it's all goes back to this everything's the same thing you've been talking about and i, I right exactly yeah i love it um did you use location of like where your clients were coming from when you chose where you were going next or was it based on location that, that suited your your ideal client better or, or that suited you better well it was more just you know um knowing that you were in a certain demographic in an area how it changes every especially in new york city it changes every like 10 12 blocks okay. it's like another neighborhood you know yeah so yeah. and and we're small, it's not gigantic, but we're small little businesses that are going in small little neighborhoods or little communities. It. So it's basically like this understanding, okay, that community over, the, over there doesn't have gyrotonic or Pilates, okay? Put a few machines there, small, you know, and it, can, and, and it starts to add up. But the Upper West Side was really important because there's a few studios up there, but that's where gyrotonic started. So a lot of people, when they see the gyrotonic emblem in the window, they're kind of like, wait a minute, you know, I remember this guy and back when. So that area was just like huge because I knew that's the essence of where this work started. Yeah, that's but any, any other neighborhood would work too, just in, you know, making sure that, you know, not too many studios close by or whatever. You know? yeah. Got it. Got it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, this was, this is awesome, Billy. It was just perfect as far as I knew once you started talking, it would stimulate some questions and it would just be a matter of, okay, this is some real valid information and, and how there's, there's a lot of roads to, to success with this work, but you like said it from the beginning, you knew from the beginning how you wanted to do it. And, and it's the vision's got to be clear and uh, you know, it's got to be like failure is not an option that you have to love it and be passionate about it. And this is what your statement is. You have to be able to get up every morning and say, this is what I do. There's no question about it. This is what I'm willing to kind of dedicate my life to. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make it successful. Yeah. And, and there's a winning equation there. But okay. if you had any, any, you know, kind of like a flip floppy about it, uh, it's going to happen. So if you want it and you love this work and you love this people and this type of business, it's a wonderful, wonderful business because you're staying in shape at the same time. But it's gonna it's gonna take your 
your life. I mean, literally, it's what you do. So if you have to sacrifice going out or dancing at clubs, whatever people do that they like to do, and I've heard other studio owners kind of like, oh, I don't have a life. I'm like, well, this should be your life. It's okay. like we're choosing. Yeah. Life. We, we're, <laughs> exactly. we're creating. Cheryl and I have created our life around. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm running out of my phone time, so right. awesome. I don't want to cut off too soon. So well, I got one percent left. One well, one thing you mentioned is uh, something with paying your trainers, and so what I'd love to do is set up another call sometime for us to talk about some other processes in the business, some yeah. of the systems in the business. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit more on our next call about how you pay your trainers, but also a little bit of how you run the rental process and how you keep all your renters from not showing sure. up at the same time. Yeah. One, one rule I go by all the time is that they can never make more than 50% than you make. And I was had a meeting with a trainer the other night where she was paying people more than 50% what the studio got and she was almost going out of business. Yeah, so if you want to give them great, great pay, it can never be more than 50% of what the studio gets. And if you so and there, then you then you have different tiers where there's some people can pay a little bit more. All right, then you could trade pay the trainer more. But if you have a lot of machines and people could spend have to spend a little bit less, you have a conversation with the trainer. Look, do you want to work? These people can only pay this much. I can only pay, but you can never go more than uh, 50 50. Yeah, and if you otherwise start, you you won't. If you start at 50 50, there's nowhere to go up without raising your rates. And so you yeah, no, no, you don't start at 50 50. Yeah, you yeah. start, you know, apprentice level one more seasoned trainer, but the max cannot get more than 50 than what you get. You'll be out of business. Yeah. Got it. I love it. I love it. Well, Billy, hey, I'm going to get cut off. Okay. Thanks for your time, man. I, I really appreciate hey. it, buddy. And we'll talk. Anyway, soon. I can help. I love it because I hope all these people can enjoy and really share this work with the world because my, my goal is to blanket this earth with gyrotonic. I mean, I completely. I and thanks for being in the same genre with me and all yeah. the work you're doing up there. For sure, man. Awesome. I appreciate your time, Billy. Have a great day, buddy. Take, take care. Right. Peace, man. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And if you did, could you do us a favor and leave some love and write us a review? My name is Stephen Dunn. I help physical therapists incorporate Pilates into their physical therapy practice. If you would like more information on how you can incorporate Pilates into your physical therapy practice, then like my Facebook page, Pilates for PTs.